Good morning, BPC, and anyone else worshiping with us. I'm actually taping this on Tuesday the 7th of December. I'm in my own office uh, at my at the congregation at Bell Presby. Uh, and of course, this is for this Sunday, the 20th of December, the fourth Sunday in Advent, traditionally given over to think about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Thanks today to these lovely people who've helped us uh, with uh, readings and with prayers. Uh, Lydia, the musicians uh, who's doing the readings and prayers, Kathy and Mercia and Peter uh, and myself, Sasha, and uh, I think Elza and I'm in a plane. Uh, I think that's right. Come, let's worship God. Moses asked God, when he was called, what's your name? These people are surely going to ask him, but I can't tell them that I've been speaking with God. What's your name? And God said, tell them, I am who I am. Very present tense. And the angel appeared to Joseph, and then the angel appeared to Mary and told each of them that they were going to have a son, and they should call him Jesus, because he would save them from their sins, save the world from their sins. And the people would come to call him Emmanuel, God with us. I am who I am, always present. I am Emmanuel, always present, present to save. Let's sing Mary's song, Tell Out My Soul the Glory of the Lord. pray. We praise you, Lord God of heaven and earth. You created the entire world. You sustain your creation, giving sunshine and water, night and day. You are sovereign over all and deserving of all our honor and praise. It says in 1 John that you are love. You demonstrate that every single day. And at this time of the year, we especially remember that in Jesus, you became flesh to show us who you are, love. We give you thanks for the many ways you love us, for the three gifts of the word, the word you spoke and created the world, the word who is Jesus, who came to us on earth, the word that is the Bible, you have revealed yourself to us and you continue to speak to us through creation, scripture, and the Holy Spirit who lives within us. 
Let us pause and praise and thank God for who he is and what he has done for each of us personally. Lord God, we know you desire relationship with us more than perfection. You are compassionate and merciful. In scripture, we see Jesus forgiving, the father running to welcome the prodigal son, Jesus restoring Peter and giving him important work in your kingdom. We confess that we have been like the innkeeper, being full of other things and not making room for Jesus. We say you are our Lord, but we still want to keep control. We have said so many times, thy kingdom come, but we have not said, my kingdom go. We have doubted like John the Baptist's father, rather than trusted like Mary. We have allowed our mistakes and failures to make us turn our face away from you instead of trusting in your love and mercy and come running to you. Let us take a moment to each confess our sins, bringing them to our loving Father and asking his forgiveness. Amen. And now, as Kathy has finished the prayers and we thank you for them, let's sing together these two songs. This is my desire hear Mary speaking, hey, this is my desire, I give you my heart, and Spirit of the Living God fall afresh on me. Let's sing those two.
reading the Word of God for us now will be Mercia from 2 Samuel and uh, Peter is going to read from Luke chapter 1. The readings will come up on the screen and I invite you to follow them closely as we prepare to study the Word of God. This is the Word of the Lord. Scripture reading will be from 2 Samuel 7 verse 1 to 11 and verse 16. God's promise to David. After the king was settled in his palace and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a palace of cedar, while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, Whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it, for the Lord is with you. That night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David. This is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with a tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of their rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now then, tell my servant David, this is what the Lord Almighty says, I took you from the pasture and from following the flock to be ruler over my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone and I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men of the earth. And I will provide a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they can have a home of their own, and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them any more, as they did at the beginning and have done ever since the time I appointed leaders over my people Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself will establish a house for you. Your house and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. Amen. Luke chapter 1 from verse 26 to verse 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greetings this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative is going to have a child in her old age 
and she who was said to be unable to conceive is now in a sixth month for no word from God will fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. The last Sunday before I sat out to write this sermon, one of the loveliest young people in our church and in our confirmation, Ruth Seth, could see her with really a very beautiful voice saying a song to Mary, titled, Mary, Did You Know? It's hauntingly beautiful as it asks Mary to think about whether she knew what kind of person her son would turn out to be. Seth carried it so well. Well, think of Mary, given that she was a young woman, probably a teenager, a virgin, pledged to be married to someone else, but now visited by an angel and told she would fall pregnant out of wedlock and in those days that meant possible death sentence and by the worst manner being stoned to death by men. And then that the child nevertheless would be the long awaited for Messiah, would be God in the flesh, God with us. Well, Mary seems to have carried all that very well when we read the text and hear it as it was read to us today. I don't know about you, but I always think pregnant women look beautiful, even if they complain about puffy hands and feet and being tired and feeling large. And I, I just think because they carry life, that they all look beautiful. Hmm. I wonder what you would call that book of maps or a book that contains many sort of maps. Of course we call it an atlas and it's named after the Greek god in Greek mythology, a great titan of a god, Atlas, who tried to take on the chief god, the god of gods, Zeus, and lost and the punishment for trying to take on god was that Atlas had to carry the heavens on his shoulders for all eternity. We carry things, don't we? All of us carry things. The other day I heard what probably each of us have heard several times and it's such sound advice but it's kind of unpleasant. I heard someone say with regard to COVID, we should all behave as if we were COVID positive and so was everybody else. We should all behave as if we carried the disease. Not nice, but I think very helpful. So we are carriers, aren't we? We, we carry things in our lives. We carry our cares and our woes. We carry concerns for others. We carry fears. I don't know about you, but when I've got a couple of spare end in my pocket, I just feel kind of whiz of life and excitement. I, I'm, I'm a spender, not a, not a saver. Um, and a few extra bucks always makes me feel um, carrying a kind of zestiness. Huh. Yeah. And when I wrap up a gift that I've bought, and I'm kind of particular about doing that, that, that I, I carry this precious thing that I've bought. It may not be expensive, but I've thought about it and I've wrapped it nicely and I carry it over to the, the person for whom it's meant. And I just always feel so good at carrying something so lovely. So what are you carrying? Are you like Atlas? Do you carry the world on your shoulders? Sure. Hmm. I now have to carry a cane. I've learned that I've, I've got to lean on something else. I can't carry myself any longer. There's something that going to right with my legs and they don't carry me. Paul, when he writes to the church in Corinth, says, we carry an aroma around with us as Christians. We, we either carry the smell of death, he says, or the fragrance of life that comes 
from Christ. The fragrance of Christ. Or the smell of death, which did carry. And King David, as we read from Second Samuel, was really carrying a big burden. David was carrying a big, big concern. He's the newly established king of Israel. It's going well. But he begins to realize he lives in this great palace made of very fine cedar wood. Beautiful place. But God, who has given him the kingdom, lives in a tent. Troubles David. He's carrying this in his heart. Now, of course, you will remember and understand that, that Israel was a pilgrim people from Egypt through to the Promised Land, and then they settled, and whatever was going on in that period, they, they still had a tent of meeting. And to represent God, they, they had an Ark of the Covenant. It was just a wooden box, really, that represented, just as a marriage ring today represents a covenant between husband and wife. Well, they had this wooden box representing the relationship between them and God. And it, it, it contained, it carried, the wooden box carried three things, we're told. The rod of Aaron, Moses' brother, that budded in a miracle. Stick came to life. And uh, a pot carrying some of the manna that came down from heaven, the kind of daily bread that they were given for all the years in the wilderness. And, and the third thing that it carried was um, a set of the golden tablets that Moses had received from God with the, what we call the Ten Commandments written on it. Well, all this represented God, the, the Ark of the Covenant containing or carrying these things, and the tent itself carrying the Ark represented God. But David is trying to make the point to Nathan, the prophet, that, that, that God's in a tent and I'm, I'm in this palace. So Nathan goes before God and behalf of the king to ask God about this. Hmm. God's answer is to David, so you think you can build me a tent? Uh, 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 you, you think you could build me a palace, a house, he actually calls it. And then he says, I have never asked my people to make a place for me. I've never asked you to do that. And then he says, let me remind you, you were just a shepherd boy when I called you. But I have made you the ruler of my people. So the subtle word coming through is, thanks that you want to do something for me, but I've never asked you to because I'm God. And you were just a little shepherd boy and I made you who you are and it's my people over which you are now their king. And then God does something strange. Instead of going on to talk about a house for God, a temple that's finally built, he actually says to David, but I will build a house for you. And I will give you a kingdom that will never end. Folks, hear this carefully. Sometimes we need to rest in our attempt to do something for God. Just rest. Because in fact, He carries us. He's reminding David of what God has done for David. He carries us and Mary was going to discover that listen on you know I'm always so self-conscious about this video system that we're going to put up that even now I've got to, I've got to remind myself that God carries me and carries this word and, and and however it comes out it's it's God that's carrying me and you together and and, and we've got to respond to him. Well, Mary, she carried a huge load for God. She was asked to carry this enormous load. The angel Gabriel may have greeted her with the words, the Lord's with you and you're most favoured, but his words terrified her, we read. And I, I don't know about you, but I pretend I would like to meet an angel, wake up and find one in my room. 
But really, to be in the presence of superlative, complete and utter holiness, pure holiness, can I stand that for a moment? Mary, we read, was, was troubled by the greeting. What kind of greeting was this? <laughs> we sometimes ourselves wait for the but when people greet us, you know. So nice to see you, but I don't really have much time now. I need to go. <laughs> or, wow, you look great in that dress. But my, you've lost a lot of weight, haven't you? Oh, all the implications about how fat you may have been in order to lose the weight. <laughs> so she's troubled by this greeting. You're highly favoured and the Lord's with you. But the angel persists. Don't be afraid. Always God says to us, don't be afraid. He's opening words to us, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And she's told she will carry a child out of wedlock. And she will carry a child fathered in her by the Holy Spirit. Spirit. And she'll carry a child who will inherit the throne of David. And it's the eternal throne that was given to David and it will go on forever. One king over Israel forever and forever and forever. And who we know is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So of course she has to ask, how will this all come about? Explain yourself, God. How's this going to work? And the answer is by the way that God the Father has only ever worked. And by the way, God the Father will only ever work. By the power and gift of His Holy Spirit. The Spirit will overcome her or come upon her and overshadow her. And I want you to bury that in your heart. Carry that in your heart. The Spirit of God will come over us and empower us. So let me end this little brief study of Mary on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Mary agrees to carry Jesus in her womb. Now some people could say, well, she didn't have much choice, but she did say, may it be to me. As you have said, that's a, that is a, a heart of submission, a teachable one, willing to submit to God, sometimes unfathomable ways. So I guess the way I end is almost predictable if I'm to try and apply this word. What are you carrying in your heart? What are you carrying on your shoulders? What, what's being carried in your brain like a, like a burden? Are you carrying a world of panic? Or are you one of those people that just basically you're a selfish person and you just carry a world of self-interest? Not panic because of your needs, but just self-interest. You just really carry your own concerns and to hang with everybody else. Paul, when he writes to the church in Corinth, tells uh, to in Galatia rather, in Galatians chapter 6, he tells us to carry each other's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. Isn't that simple? It's the only time he ever refers to the law of Christ rather than the grace of Christ. But if you when a, when a sense of fulfilling something for Jesus, carry someone else's burdens. And then three verses later he says, oh, and also carry your own. So that's our task. We, we pick up our own suitcase as Christian people and we reach and pick up the suitcase of someone else. That's what Christ wants us to do. That's how we fulfill his law. So, can I ask you, as we move towards Christmas, to carry Christ in your hearts. As Paul told the Colossians, let the peace of Christ through your heart, set him apart in your heart as Lord, and let the word of God dwell in you richly. 
carry Christ, carry him, carry his word, and carry it to others. I hope you'll find the way somehow to remind people that this is all about Jesus. I hope you'll carry him to others in your person, that your fragrance will be full of life, your joy, full of goodness. The grace of Christ has come, the light of God has come through your presence to others. Not my best sermon, but if you listen carefully, you'll see God is saying, you don't have to do too much for me because I'll carry you. But if you want to do something for me, then perhaps like Mary, carry Jesus and pick up someone else's burdens because that's what he wants. Hang on, I think it would be too hard for you to look around and find someone else in need and for God to say, go for it. Pick it up now. That's what I want you to do. Thanks for listening, folks, and I, I hope you'll have a really blessed Christmas in a few days' time. Prepare well for that and have great joy as you celebrate Christmas. Amen. Let us now pray for other people. Holy Father, giver of all life, as we give thanks today for Mary and her love for you and obedience towards you, we pray for all who are surprised by their pregnancies, for all men and women who discover they're pregnant and are first filled with fear or shock or worry or, or even horror. We pray, Lord, for women who's who, who announce to their partners, I'm pregnant, and do not immediately feel cherished or adored or cared for. We pray, Father, for all men who respond to the news of a pregnancy with something like, I don't need this in my life right now. Gracious Lord, we pray for all who will carry their child to full term with little support, lots of judgment and even the continued embarrassment of others in the family, embarrassed about the pregnancy. Oh Lord, bless those mothers, make them strong and strong against this kind of horrible attitude. We pray, Holy Father, for all who will abort the pregnancy when neither mother nor child are in danger. O oh Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you for these. Father God, we have read that Mary treasured things in her heart, though her heart was cut deeply as people reacted to her child, to Christ the our Lord. So we ask for all parents and especially mothers whose hearts ache and will ache are broken and will break by the cruelty of others to their child, the one they carried and gave birth to. Lord, for all their lives, we ask your blessing on those who will be hurt by the way the world treats their children. We pray for your church, Christ Jesus, your church in all the world, that she may carry Christ, carry you, Lord, proudly and unashamedly, and to declare that you are the saviour of the world, the saviour of the world and the only mediator between God and mankind. Gracious Lord, we pray lastly today for all who give off an odour of defeat, of being victims and victimised and who've had a spirit that has crushed them. We ask for those, Lord, who have had joy strangled out of them, to be blessed by you that they may awake to the power of the resurrection at work in their lives and carry afresh the good news of Jesus Christ, risen Lord. Saviour of the world. Come, we pray, and fill us again with your Holy Spirit, that we may become your obedient servants. 
and see your glory in our lives. As did Mary. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well folks, our last hymn today is Christ is surely coming. It's robust and strong, just three verses, but sing your hearts out. <laughs> of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Go with great joy and serve the Lord. Now we're going to sing Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ within me. See you on Christmas Day. Christ before